everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, you've probably seen some of my cord videos that were shot on a crappy little camera and you couldn't see the screen very well. Uh, I'd like to go back to that machine now. Uh, there's so much good potential for, for beats in that machine um, that I think I'm gonna try to make some real music for it and document that process with you guys. Uh, so today is the first step of that and I just shot the first video. I think you're gonna enjoy it. It actually came out like really cool sounding, which I like expected it to be pretty bad because I haven't worked on it in a while. Um, so definitely let me know what you think. Let me know what your questions are and what you'd like to see in further videos. So I'm gonna be publishing this on another channel as well um, where I've been doing kind of pro audio reviews and we'll see which audience takes to it more. Um, but please let me know what you think and what questions you have about this great machine and get out there and make some music. Okay, the first thing I'm doing is opening up a blank pattern file. You can make this yourself just by clearing everything out of it. This is just the default synthesizer and then these are even empty parts here. Um, I like to start from this and we're gonna hit shift record make sure our input level is up so that we can see the turntables. Uh, mono is the sampling mode because if you're in stereo, you're not gonna be able to slice anything. So um, you wanna be in mono mode. We're gonna go over to the turntables and cue up something pretty recognizable. I want the flow. I'm gonna hit this on the one. I want about the flow. Ready? Watch the level. One, two, one, two, two three, four. four. Get it. Two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, stop. Okay, so let's see what we got. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, that's perfect. We're gonna write it. If you start it on the one, you don't have to start it on the one and end it on the four, but if you do, it saves you a lot of time in a kind of clunky um, utility that they have here. So you're gonna go to sample edit. This is our last sample. Notice that all the pads are lit. Okay. Because that ended up being very nice, we don't have to trim it, I don't think. Um, but let's see what it wants to do when we do this. Um, I like to push it up in the digital gain to make it punchy. Move this up to plus 12 play level. And then we're going to time slice, hit enter. 3216, so it seems to see it as two bar, a two bar loop, so we're gonna take it. That's pretty awesome, yeah. So the threshold will adjust uh, at what point in the uh, dynamics of the sample it's slicing. So we can see if we turn up the threshold here, parts start disappearing and that will turn your kick into the kick and the beat after the kick. So that's a duh duh instead of just a duh. Um, the snare just has more air after it, which is kind of nice actually. But if you go really high, you'll see it starts to disappear and you get. Which can actually be kind of cool because then you get a fill on this one, on this one sample, you have a whole fill. Um, but for what we're doing, I'm going to keep it at 23, uh, write it, and that's gonna save the sample. And then we can exit. And now we are going to um, put our sample with our oscillator key. You wanna be very careful with this knob because this will switch your pattern. So once you've been working on a pattern for a little while, if you hit this one uh, and you haven't hit your right key to uh, write your pattern, write it twice, um, this will go ahead and delete whatever you were working on. Uh, so you wanna be kinda of careful about that. Um, with this first pad selected, we're gonna hit the oscillator and we're just gonna roll backwards. So this is the other handy thing about having everything blanked out is you start at um, the sawtooth is sample number one. And so when you go backwards, you get your most recent sample. Um, I'm gonna make this a kick. So that's not a clean kick, but we might use it for something. So that, 
That's a pretty good kick. Let's see if we have one that have, doesn't have a hi hat at the same time. Go, 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 go. That's actually got an open hi hat. That's kind of cool too. It's a double hi-hat. Okay, so I'm gonna take that one for now. Uh, do the same thing to get a snare. And then um, there's a, because of the way that it lets you uh, shunt off an open hi-hat when a closed hi-hat hits, um, you most typically wanna keep your hi-hats in 15 and 16. Um, we're not going to go over those techniques today, but um, the uh, we're going to put the closed hi hat down here, and okay, that's a good one. And then uh, if we have an open hi hat, we're going to put. It Okay, so this hi-hat uh, is an open hi-hat, but it also has a kick at the same time. Now, when two, two elements are very far away from each other on the spectrum, we can use something called a high-pass or a low-pass filter, which lets the high-pass, the high-end, or the low-end, respectively, and that's LPF and HPF here. So we're going to go ahead and hit HPF. And you notice it got really tinny right there. So we're gonna spin this filter until our cutoff rolls into something that sounds like a hi-hat, but not like a kick. If we go all the way down, it lets the kick back in. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can remember where the um, 15 and 16 cutoff is uh, alternate 15 and 16 and alternate 13 and 14. So you can put these um, on either of them and it will not allow them to play at the same time. So you can cut it off, you can shut off um, uh, an open hat with a closed hat. Okay, so we have the elements here to make um, a song, but one other thing I'm going to do is go back to our um, tempo. BPM. And roll this back to 95. And then I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to switch to sequencer mode. With this first beat selected, this is deciding where I'm going to be putting kick drums. So I'm going to put a kick drum there, and then I'm going to put kick drums there, and then I'm going to hit play. Okay, so something like that. Go back to trigger mode. So now we're, we have the snare selected. Okay, and then we're getting back to I'm going to throw some uh, This uh, part key lets you cycle all your parts so you can see the closed hi-hats here and then we switch to the open hi-hats and we can put the open hi-hat where we're not seeing the closed. Um, so I'm still thinking that this open hi-hat is has a little too much presence. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with it and put a high-pass filter on it. So. So that's a beat. Um, so now we want to take a melodic element into this. 
Um, first, we're going to go ahead and write. Um, if you exit that and hit shift right, this lets you put a name to it. So I'm just gonna change a couple characters as an example so that I can remember where we're working and right over and so that we have our new title here. Okay, so now we're gonna look at uh, some melodic samples. Um, over at the turntable, I've queued something up. So this is just an example of something you could do um, uh, so w we could also key this. Um, it actually seems to be a C, so I'm not that worried about it. Um, the reason being, once you assign this to the keypad, um, it's going to transpose everything, and if you didn't start with a C note, um, you are going to end up with things that are, are not um, musical uh, or in the, the keys that match up with other um, samples. So it's good to sample C when you can, um, and if you have a turntable, you can adjust the pitch in order to do that. So we're going to go back to our sample utility Sample edit, enter, sample two. Okay, so this one already came in kind of low, so we definitely want to hit this play level plus 12. Okay. Um, in this case, we don't want to apply time slicing because we're probably just going to use it the way it is. And it seems like it comes in on a, a good one, like thump, so we don't need to adjust the start times, but just to show you how we would trim that, I will do so. So if we wanted to cut a little off the top, we'd just start scrolling here. If you move over, you can get going a little faster. So now, you'll notice we've lost the head of the sample and we're into the mid of the sample, so we've trimmed the head back. And that's actually kind of a cool sound too, so I'll just save that and we'll work with that. Okay, so now we're gonna exit out and we're going to apply this sample right here. Let's, let's see what this sounds like over a beat. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can adjust the tail end and trim the tail end right here on the pad. So if you take this one and you do amp EG, and uh, we're going to take the decay and release back. So this is something you can do to alter the length of your open hi-hats or make samples stabbier. Notice that the attack is also going to have an effect. That's like kind of a cool sample. Okay. Um, so from here, we're going to take a look at the keyboard. Um, with that sample selected, you hit the keyboard and... and... You'll notice that is the cheesiest progression possible, and that is because our default is set to the major scale. C. Dorian. Um, Without getting much into music theory, I can just tell you that the Mixolydian is pretty jazzy. Uh, the harmonic minors, where you're going to find a lot of hip hop stuff, um, and the major blues, or minor blues, my, pardon me. The minor pentatonic is also good.
So that's pretty cool. Let's see what that sounds like. So if that's just the first phrase, we can go ahead and hit record and let it roll. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's pretty cool. Um, we could also look at what would happen if we added just a little bit of delay on here. So I'm gonna turn internal effects on, turn the edit knob all the way back to zero, and we're going to put a little, uh, it's either 1 8 or 1 16th here. <laughs> Okay, so next we're gonna get out of the keyboard mode. We're gonna go back to uh, the basic synthesizers here, the sine wave. Okay, and then we'll go to the keyboard. By the way, this alters your octave, so if you're trying to take this sine wave, take it down to a bass line. something in there I didn't want. So you can go to the sequencer, take out those notes that I hit. Okay, here's an example though. I hit one note that I didn't really like that much, so. So now I get another chance to come at it. If we go to part mute, we can mute out some of these parts if we just wanted to listen to the bass line. So that's pretty, that's pretty hot. Um, we can also take a look here at some distortion. Yeah, I've thought for a long time that the part mute might be a good way to structure a set. If you were trying to do something live with this box, you'd go through all of your um, all of your patterns um, and save them with just the kick drum on, so that when you come in, you have just a bass, and then you can build up your set.
Well, anyway, that was what I wanted to show you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, next time, maybe I'll pick it up with chaining together samples um, and take this to the next level.